Oof. So, 750. Okay. Let's go. Another draft. Sulfur Falls. Garna. Lingering Phantom. Do we want to play Red Black? Do we want to play Garna? I like Garna. I like Garna a lot, actually. Do we want to play Red Black again, though? Lingering Phantom's cool because you can sort of recursion it. You can keep pulling it back. Sulfur Falls. I kind of want to just take the rare land for my collection. And maybe we, like, find a wizard's draft here. We've got a Volder and Arcana... Or a... Voldean. Voldalian. Voldalian Arcanus, not Volderin. And a Syncopate that could wheel. Syncopate probably wheels, right? Let's do it. I'll take Sulfur Falls. Flames of the Keld. I think we take Cloud Reader Sphinx every every time that it comes up. Card's super good. Antiquities War. What does this do? Look at the top five cards from your library. You fill an artifact from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom. Any order. Artifacts become artifact creatures with base power 5-5 five, five until end of turn. Yeah, but... Like, unless you have two of it or three of it, I, I don't feel good about that. I think we take Fiery or Blink, and I think I'm going to take Fiery. I think I like Fiery more. Divination, Cold Water Snapper, both good. I'm going to take the Cold Water Snapper. There's another one. Oh my god, what if it wheels? What if we get two Antiquities Wars here? Otherwise, we're taking Gitu Journey Mage. Let's do it. We're gonna we're gonna make it we're gonna make it happen. Rona, Rona, huh? There's also um, Scry Birdie, Blood Tallow Candle, Aether Glider. I'm gonna take Blood Tallow. We're gonna try to make the double antiquities door or er, double antiquities war. Maybe a chainer's torment too. And we just like make some big dumb stuff. Here's the arcane flight for the cold water snapper. We'll do this because it's on color. Nav compass, yep. Give it to me. Give me those cheap artifacts, my boy. Lingering Phantom, uh, Arcanus, yeah, Arcanus Wield, Coldwater Snapper Wield. Oh, the second one didn't wheel. Rip. One Grace Acolyte. Explorers. Divest the sideboard. Rescue the sideboard. Kind of bummed the second one didn't wheel. But what is this? Evra Halkion Witness. Lifelink 4-4. Four, four. Exchange your life total with Evra Halkion Witness's power. So it just, like, kills people. Basically. Danatha. That's auras and equipment, which we're not really on. I take the blink of an eye, I think. Oof. So, at this point, the chance that we find another Antiqu Antiquities War is kind of low, right? So, let's cut the Nav Compass for now. And we'll just assume that we're on blue-red. Which means Journey Mage is pretty good. Oath of Teferi. We take Scholar. I don't really want to play this. 
Fire Fist Adepts, great. Wizard's Lightning is also great. Um, one of the burn spells is going to wield this, like, three red burn spells. Not everybody's going to be drafting red, right? DP Journey Mage number two. Send all the Pearl Trident. I like this card, but I don't know how much I like this card. I think I like it enough to draft it. Take a Frenzy Rage. Excavator. Oof. Befuddle. Memorial to War. Playing Memorial to War just feels bad. There's not enough situations where you really want to cut somebody off the land. I think it might be the worst uncommon in the set. Hold up. I hear my dog downstairs whining, so I'm going to be right back real quick. Sorry, guys. He's not all the way downstairs, he's just at the foot of my bed. I thought that he had gotten stuck in the garage or something and couldn't get out, but he appears to be fine. We did wheel Radiant Lightning, which we have a setup to potentially be an aggro deck, so I'm okay with Radiant Lightning for sure. We're not really in love with anything here. There's another Radiant Lightning. My double Radiant Lightning deck, I guess so. Warlord's Fury probably doesn't make the cut, but it's something. Fight with Fire definitely makes the cut. Fight with Fire makes the cut every time. Over all that other stuff. Oh no, there's a Tatiova that we're going to have to pass. Rip. Journey Mage. Fire Fist Adapt for fiery intervention yep i think that's the call one of these things has a body the other does not okay so lava runner versus blink with the eye versus divination at this point um i don't think blood tallow candle is going to make the cut let's do some some quick cuts real quick let's look at what we have we have a fiery intervention two fire fist add ups we have Multiple Radiant Lightnings, which is kind of questionable. I think we'll only want run one of those. So, turning on Lava Runner. We've got Blink of an Eye early. It's going to be the Divination here. Or the Blink. Let's take the Blink. Let's not do anything that isn't clearing the way for our board as far as uh, spells are concerned, ideally. I think Kelden Raider. Goblin Warchief. Basically, just a three, three or a two, two for three. Um, fervent strike, instant speed plus one plus zero first strike. Can do some stuff for us, but not that much. It'll work well on what Kelden Raider, D two Journey Mage. Those are the big things that it works well on. But I don't really want another Lava Runner. I think I'm okay with having a combat trick in here. Let's 
sack artifacts. Lull. Just take the 4-4 four, four for 5. Actually, we've got a lot of 5 drops. Arcanus. Yeah. Arcanus good. Yeah, Arcanus good. Another Arcane Flight or another Radiant Lightning. We might actually just be like a Radiant Lightning deck. I haven't played around with that card, so I don't know how to rate it exactly. I know that it can struggle against certain things, but it's really good against some other things. And it is a burn spell. Hominid Explorers shouldn't make the cut. But it is on color. All right. We're not cutting a whole lot because we've already kind of gone through and cleaned up most of this. We're definitely keeping Arcane Flight in. Fervent Strike's a potential cut. G2 Lava Runner is also kind of a potential cut. But I think I like having it. I don't think we play Frenzy Rage. I think we'll run it like that. So this is blue red. Face, face, face. Going face. This is not as good of a deck as our last one that we drafted, I'm pretty sure. It's missing a lot of the uh, removal pieces that we'd like. We've got a fight with fire, we've got some radiant lightnings, but not a whole lot to deal with their big stuff when it starts dropping, and it starts dropping early enough that it could be a problem for us. We could have also considered maybe going like one less land. We could have been a 17 land deck. Are we a 17? We might be a... 17 might be default. This is... Almost okay, but not quite. We got a mulligan. This is keepable. On top, yeah. Cool. Land on top's good. Especially our dual untapped land is real nice, because it gives us double source. Sulfur Falls almost by itself makes this draft worthwhile. Anytime that you draft playables, it's like, yes, give me those. Same with the Fight with Fire. Opponents like, what's with this constructed deck with the, uh, the dual lands? Like you're playing Skittering Surveyor, Blood Tallow Candle. I wonder if they're on. I wonder if they're actually playing a Antiquities War deck. That would be hilarious. Forest. Play out the other Arcanist. The Arcanist. We can kick Blink with an eye at this point pretty easily. We can also play the Radiant Lightning whenever we want. A very nice Lava Runner. Get a combat. Get him for one. And do that and play the Lava Runner out in turn. 
We don't have any really, really big payoffs for wizards, but we do just kind of have a low to the ground aggro deck that happens to have wizards in it. Well, we've got a couple of fire fist add ups and some Gitu journey mages and stuff like that, but we don't have, um, what's his name? Aziz, the flying guy, the flying wizard dude. We don't have him. Yep. Just keep getting in. Nickel and Diamond to death. Uh huh. Okay. And hold up, Link. We're not going to play the Radiant Lightning before we uh, are going to see the benefits off of it. We don't want to just reveal that we have it and then he can do stuff. How to go to Skin Witch kicked. Okay, so. You have to discard too. I guess we're discarding Blink and Radiant Lightning. And holding the Cold Water Snapper. Which is fine, it's not terrible. It's just not great either. Lots of volume down lurking today. It's all good, dude. All good, don't worry about it. I'm just, uh, I'm happy to have anybody here chilling out and watching and just having a good time. We do get the extra attack on Lava Runner, which is nice. We're gonna hold the Arcane Flight for a turtle, though. Turtle, turtle. I do believe Blood Tallow Cannon, Blood Tallow Candle says target creature, so we are all right. Just going on the Cold Water Snapper Flyer plan. It's not a Fraley's coming down. It's a little scary. The Ball Paladin coming down. He did that in the wrong order. Yeah, he knows. We could just make our Lava Runner fly and start getting in damage right now. Could also, Fire Fist add up down this Cabal Paladin. Yeah, there we go. Keep getting in for one. Having a, a charge or something to play would be really nice. If he keeps blocking like that and just blow him out, but we don't have any of those. We've got, um, no, I got rid of the Fervent Strike, didn't I? It might still be in here. Product Wanderer coming down, five to five. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah, we still want to do the Cold Water Snapper. Yeah, there we go. Get Snapper down. And now we can just uh, jump block with the little stuff. And send Snapper flying in. So, not terrible. Is it the six? We could triple block this. We lose two of them if we do that. And he's on green. So, combat tricks are a likely have. But we don't want to block with um, Snapper. And these guys have Indestructible this turn. Just as a, as a side note. So what we'll do is we'll just block the little guys with Arcanus. Then we'll make our snapper fly and we'll put him on a three turn clock and our clock's one turn faster than his is like that.
on future turns we'll be able to trade off the Skitterer and the Skin Witch fairly easily. Memorial to Folly. Okay, what's he pulling back? Cabal Paladin. Okay. Okay. There's another Arcanist. I mean, yeah, play it. Let's Arcane play on the Snapper. Start beating in. Fly Turtles. Two turns. We are going to have to put something in front of the Cabal Paladin. Um, we can just put Lava Runner there, though. I mean, that's not that bad. Let's see what he finds off his Memorial Unity. It could be good. Could be another Cabal Paladin. Oh, so this gets a little bit scary if he's got more um, Historics to put down. He already has, like, four of them that are either down or in the graveyard. So there's a chance that he doesn't have any. Um, so we can triple block this. I think I'm going to triple block this. He's only got one green up. So we'll, we'll take the triple block trade here. We'll lose Fire Fist and Gitu Lava Runner. But we will kill his Bardic Wanderer. Island. Get him with Cold Water Snapper. Down to five. Say go. I think that we're gonna get a win here at the end of the day. The flying Cold Water Snapper is just a bit too strong for opponent to deal with. Hexproof flyers with five attack, man. It's a four turn clock that you can't do a whole lot about. He could have like a Wind Graves Acolyte or something and slow us down, turn it into a three turn clock from a one turn clock. Would be quite good for him, but. He said he's just gonna scoop. Alright. 1 0. Off to a quick start. I'm glad we mulliganed like we did. If we um, kept the starting hand, even if we found lands, we would have been too slow out the gate. We definitely need to have some two drops in our starting hand to keep up with uh, most of the other decks, I'm pretty sure. You fine, TW. All right. Let's see what we got. We're going first. We are on the play. We've got lands. We've got journey mages. We've got an arcanist. It's great. This is a nice aggressive start. Four lands is a little bit on the heavy side, but it's not bad. Opponents on some sort of ramp plan, so. means hopefully we'll get a little bit of time to get out in front. But it might mean that we just get uh, out mid-range. Alright, let's get down Journey Mage.
And then next turn we can um, potentially offer the trade with Journey Mage if he doesn't put anything else down. I know three mana is a little bit hard for some people. I think that's a relative theme of this set is that three mana is just not great. We can also trade the Overseer here. Um, and let him get in too. We could let him get in with both. Let's do that. I'll take the slightly more aggressive line and let him hit us. Go to combat. Swing for four. Drop another journey mage. Put him to 12. Rampaging Cyclops, okay. I'll take five, yep. Now, do we want to blink the Cyclops, or do we want to... Oh, we could just uh, Fire Fist out of the Cyclops, that works too. Should do four, if we can count. Yes, we can. We will put him to five. And we're holding up Fiery Intervention. If we draw a land, we can Fiery Intervention and Blink of an Eye. And then swing in with three. He's forced to chump. There's another Cyclops, okay. Let's Fiery Intervention this. Or do I blink it? Let's blink it. Yeah, let's blank it. And kick. And we'll we'll look for a little bit more value out of our cards. But we'll swing in with all of our creatures. Radiant Lightning is really good. Maybe we don't swing in with our creatures because we get a two for one off Radiant Lightning. But we do swing in because Radiant Lightning kills him. So let's do that, yeah. He's going to block with the Kelvin Overseer and with the Goblin. We're going to lose two of our guys. We'll put him to one. He needs to heal for three this turn or he's dead. Which should mean that he's dead on red-green. I'm pretty sure that we are golden here. There's a land. And he passes. And what's on? Yeah, that works. We had to kill in like three different ways. I was gonna arcane flight go for the attack first. If the attack didn't work, we would radiant lightning. Silver tier two, filling up. Oh, hey, rank up. Silver 1. Almost up to a uh, gold rank for our limited rating. Oh, well, I tried to click the card. I clicked next to the card and said, so we don't get to see what it was. But we've got a card in our collection now. <laughs> All right. Quick draft. I hope they add a, um, like, display new cards button at some point. I don't think that's in the game yet. But that'd be really useful when you're just finishing up a draft. You're kind of clicking through your awards, not paying that much attention. You can go and see, okay, this is what I pulled in draft. These are the card awards that I've pulled. And know what the new cards in your collection are so that you can go and um, make edits and stuff later. Add some new stuff. Play around. I don't really like net decking. I like playing around with what I have in my collection for the most part. Having the 
wild cards is great and all, but you don't really get enough of them to just go and straight build whatever net deck you want all the time. We do have Talarian Scholar into Firefist Adept here, so I will keep. Firefist Adept is just powerful enough that if you can play it on five and you've got one or two wizards on the board, it can take care of a creature most of the time. And then you get a 3-3 body left over, which is fine. It's plenty. It's plenty big enough. There's an Arcanist, too, so good keep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it now. Good keep. We've also got the Fiery Intervention in hand to deal with one of his big bombs. He is getting a Sarah Disciple out first. There is our fifth land. So, Voldaren Arcanus. Voldalian. I, mean, I keep calling him Voldaren. It's Voldalian. Voldalian. He will technically get to get some damage across before we will. This is a rat colony. That's interesting. I wonder if he uh, pulled enough of them to make the rat colony not terrible, or if uh, if not, not probably more likely. Oh, radiant lightning! So good. I'll just play it right now. Kill both of his things. Target a player? Yeah. The two for one on Radiant Lightning early on. Oof. Feels good, man. He's sitting there going, well, crap. There goes basically everything that I've done this game so far. He's on at least three colors, right? The Sarah Disciple. Let's say Mountain Talarian Scholar. Get in with Arcanus. attacker oh man so I'm like not excited a little appreh apprehensive also, a little bit yes, excited. I've got um, my first day at Mickey D's starting tomorrow. I go in for orientation today, but trying to save up some money so that hopefully we can get a little bit of a better computer. I'm sure that you can see Magic the Gathering itself is a little bit framey. That's uh, not the game's fault. Not entirely, anyways. Part of that's due to the fact that that little laptop can just only handle so much, so I'm hoping to save up a little bit of money by Christmas time at the latest. I'm going to be bouncing that and classes starting in August, so I'm probably going to be streaming less. I might end up only streaming on weekends, and some weekends I might not be able to stream at all because I might have stuff going on. Oof. Another Fire Fisted up off the top like that. So good. Drafting multiple Fire Fisted ups feels sweet. This is a card that I haven't had multiple of show up in a draft when I've been on a uh, blue red before. I've only had one pop up ever, so having Fire Fist add up into Fire Fist add up is a new feeling for me, and it feels good. So we're going in for six, and we've got nine on the board next turn, is what we're currently representing. I think we're, uh, outpacing our other deck as far as how quickly we're just tearing through ladder. 
We're at three wins already? And I'm going to be uploading all of these to YouTube later. So if you miss part of the draft, miss the draft process, and you're just joining in for games now, feel free to look me up. These will be going up probably uh, Friday and Sunday. I have one going up tomorrow as well from yesterday. Trying to create a little bit of a backlog, so to speak. I went and changed my um, bit settings yesterday off stream to show all time, which I'm kind of glad that I did because you get to see some of the people that have really uh, supported my stream from the very beginning up there, which is great. I'm not sure if I'm following. Uh, yeah, let me uh, let me grab that link real quick. Oh, let me um, decide on this hand first. This is keepable. We'll keep this. Two lands is a little questionable. We'll, 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 we'll test it, though. We'll test the waters. We're definitely a more aggressive deck. We can go Island into Sulphur Falls. We do not get Lava Runner down turn one, but we can get it down turn two. All right, YouTube, load up. I hate that um when I tab away from Magic, the sound goes down, because when I'm streaming and I'm trying to uh, do stuff like find links for people, for example can be a little bit irritating to have the stuff just cut out. Hey, Adamant dropping those fat bitties. My dude. Yeah, there's the sound. Oof. It's one of my favorite sounds because it means that people are enjoying the content that I'm providing, which is good for me, especially because I'm still kind of going through growing pains as a channel a little bit, especially after switching over to Magic from uh, from Pokemon. Um, So I don't want to blink of an eye this right now. We might blink it during his end stuff or something, so we're just going to click the end turn button. I'm going to go over here and try to find my YouTube link. My channel. Found uh... Attacks. Opponent is attacking, so we will offer the block, and if he does something, we'll blink of an eye. When you cast a spell, if a spell was kicked, put a plus one, plus one counter on Halar. And then Hlar deals damage equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on it to each opponent. Huh. This seems like a pretty good card. If you're in the kicker archetype, at least. I'm perfectly okay with spending my fight with fire to kill that, I think. Would we rather do 10 damage to face? Yeah, but we're playing from behind here because we are behind on lands, which feels really bad. So we gotta kill this. That creature must die. And then we can get him for one. Okay with that. Alright, so let's find our link here. I think that this should work. There you go. Let me know if that doesn't work. Kelton Raider. Coming down. Get the fatty 4-3. Finally get to start applying a little bit of pressure on the board. And we'll discard a Radiant Lightning, I think, here. We want to dig towards our Fire Fisted Ups and... 
fiery intervention, you know, like good stuff that deals with his stuff. He doesn't have any cheap tokens that we're seeing so far. We can get him with Lava Runner because it is flipped on now. It's getting better. I need to go and um, change my Nightbot commands to display my YouTube channel and stuff. I've got it set up right now to where it's still linking some old discords from Pokemon and stuff that are not necessarily dead, but aren't really alive either. There's a cool Gym League thing that me and another nine or so streamers were doing where we're having... Uh, we're having people in the Pokemon community challenge us for gym badges, and they play against our gym deck, and they bring whatever they want, and that was really fun. I did that for about six months or so. It was one of my favorite things over there on that. Um, do I have to fire intervention of freaking Gitu Lava Runner here? I think I kind of do. I think we need to be able to get in. We could Blink of an Eye it as well instead. I think maybe that's better. Let's Blink of an Eye it. Because then it just comes back as a 2-2 two -two and we can deal with it just fine. We can pay Kicker and we can draw a card. We've got a advantage in hand size right now. And we don't necessarily want to give that up. This will let us speed up our clock a little bit. Coming back down. And he's going to be beaten back for three, probably. The assumption is that he's going to do that because he's not blocking with that uh, Gutu Chronicler. If he was trying to slow us down, he'd be chump blocking. What's he got? Please, no Fire Fist add ups. Your hair is amazing. Yeah, man. I love the YouTube intro. Your hair is amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I recorded that um, back in November of last year, I think. So it's been a little bit. It, it could probably use a little bit of an update at this point. So this turn gets a little bit scary. He's going to get in for five. We're not attacking. We're going to hold back. But we can fire intervention that next turn. I just wanted to go ahead and get down the cold water snapper so that it can attack next turn. No blockers. Hit me. Hit me, daddy. Let's see what's six. Oh, Varix. Oh, oh, that's scary. Okay. Yep. 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 All right. I think we have to kind of race with Varix here. Which means we're going to Fiery Intervention. For five damage on the Kubu. Or Kabu. Whichever one that is. It's a Kabu, right? You a Kabu? You're a Kabu. Kill the Kabu. And then we take eight if we don't blink of an eye. So we're going to do that. So we're looking at eight this turn. He swings back for seven. We've got a faster clock, despite the fact that we're at a lower health total right now. If he doesn't chump block here, and he is going to chump block. That's good. He's double blocking. Let's kill the Lava Runner. We still get him for four. He can come back for five. This is really close. We do have Radiant Lightning in hand, so we have some burn to finish things off. And 
and he is holding back the Chronicler to chump block. Fire Fist only kills one. We have to play it anyways. Uh, take this, Varix. Die, scum. Actually, we're going to hit the Chronicler in case there's some sort of pump spell that brings him out of dying with that, because that wouldn't be good. I think we're still okay. I think we're still winning with Radiant Lightning. It depends on what he has in his hand and if he keeps swinging with Varix or not. The assumption is that he'll keep swinging with Varix and he's going to assume that his clock's faster. So if his hand is lands or cards that do nothing or something that pumps Varix by two attack, then we'll win. Four. Come on, don't do anything. Come on, don't have anything. Oh no, he's still not dead. We need one more damage. F. Oh, we're just dead. Yep. Oh, we'll put him to one. <laughs> we'll see if he miscounts too. Maybe he'll miscount and scoop, right? Yes! Fuck yes! <laughs> he miscounted. He just straight miscounted. He had one health left. Oh my god. I can't believe. <laughs> uh... Oh man. Alright. <laughs> Uh, work out the giggles. Take a sip of water. Oh. <laughs> Alright, well, there's an extra fatal push that we already have. That's cool. We're up to four wins already. We haven't lost yet. Wizard's too good, five me. Oh man, we lost that game. That was that was hilarious. And by lost that game, I mean we played it perfectly. We put all the damage out there before any of it actually happened, so we made it harder for him to count. And sometimes making it harder for the opponent to count is how you make them make mistakes and then they lose the game. So I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to make that a highlight. I gotta go highlight that later. Highlight it and share it out on my Twitter that I never used or something. <laughs> Alright, uh this is fine. Yeah, we got Arcanus into Journey Mage. We've got a fight with fire to do some removing of his stuff. We've got a cold water snapper in hand for some late game. Now we need to reel it back for a minute and not get cocky, not start making mistakes with our play because we had our opponent scoop at 1 HP. Opponent's on black. Stronghold Confessor coming down as a one drop. That's fine with us. We're going to drop Sulphur Falls. We're going to get Arcanus out here. So now, how big of a mistake do you think taking this as my first pick was? We got Sulphur Falls as our rare on our starter pack, and I was like, yeah. I want the rare land for my collection. You know, at the end of the day, whether we play it or not doesn't really matter. I think overall, during a draft, that's kind of a mistake to make. But I think we got really lucky. So this guy's got Menace twice, I think. Demonic 
Or does that... No, this is the one that returns to hand. Yeah, okay, so he can kick that later. He can also blink of an eye that. With Kicker at a later point. For now, we just drop Journey Mage. And we say, yeah, but we're going face. We don't care about blocking your 2 2. We're going to leave it on the board as long as you keep swinging with it, probably. Certainly wouldn't be terrible to just make his demonic vigor not worth anything, though. Caligo Skin Witch. So he's playing a lot of Kicker cards. I wonder if he's got, like, a Joseph S or something in here. If he does, we certainly need to be careful about his uh, his late game possibilities. Um, let's go to combat here. Get our beat down on. It's probably going to block like this. We'll get 3 in. Probably won't block at all. Um, so now, upside and downside, let's, um, end turn and not blink yet. We'll blink on his turn, if we blink at all. Let's see if he goes ahead and plays a 4-drop. If he does, then we'll blink the Stronghold Confessor. If he does anything, we'll blink the Stronghold Confessor. If he does nothing and goes straight to combat, we'll have to think about it. No attacks. My turn. All right, so we'll blink the stronghold. Make my life easy, why don't you? All right, we're up to five mana now. We could kill the skin, which if we wanted to, we are on all the lands in hand. I think we're holding the fight with fire as a finisher at this point, just because we're finding nothing but land. Unless we have a good reason not to. There's a chance that he's got a um, combat trick. Nope, no combat trick. Pass it up. This is, is it 10 mana to cast this? 6 plus 3 is 9. We're on 6 next turn. We've got 7 in hand. Kick Stronghold Confessor coming down. 3-3 three, three body. We've got a bit 10 already. We've got 8 mana in hand, so we'll get Snapper down, and we're just gonna we're just gonna go on the defensive, right? He's gonna die to fight with fire. We need one more land in the next three draws. Potentially more draws if we draw more blink of an eyes or anything like that. Plus, we can beat him with Cold Water Snapper. So, I mean... Just only good things. He kicks to the Skizik. Okay. Well, there's a Radiant Lightning. Oh, we actually have enough next turn because we have Old Aaron. <laughs> yes! Alright. Um, Is this instant speed? This is instant speed. End turn. We'll Radiant Lightning him and stuff. Or uh, if it's going to help us make any blocks, we might do it. Demonic Vigor on the Skizik. Gotcha. It's a cool play. Attacks. I'm going to beat him with Skizik, I'm guessing. Yeah. So, we can actually block with Journey Mage and then kill it with Radiant Lightning. We take 4 damage. And he goes, Haha, you fucked up. And I go, Haha, no I didn't. Demonic Vigor goes to the graveyard. Skizik comes back to the hand. He can't play it this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. 
and nine. So we'll kick a fight with fire. Submit. 10, submit. Boom. Crazy. Awesome. Oh, so speaking of our YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel we've been playing mostly Magic, but we've also been doing some Darkest Dungeon. I think I might be killing that though because I've got some capture issues with Darkest Dungeon. It gets a little bit framey and it um does this weird thing where the top of the capture like it makes like some weird lines and it blows out of proportion. So I've got to go and like fix it every time that I start the game up and then I'll like forget sometimes. So I'm I'm not in love with that. So the Darkest Dungeon runs on hold for now, but we might be playing some Slay the Spire, um, especially on days where I'm working and I don't have time to do a full draft run necessarily. Because draft runs can take, they can take upwards of two hours, you know. So if I've only got two hours to come on and hang out with you guys on Twitch and record and stuff, we'll probably do a little bit of Slay the Spire, which is, it's it's card gamey. It's got card game mechanics and elements to it, and it's also got uh, roguelike mechanics and elements to it. So if you know anything about like Binding of Isaac or any of those games, it's got a little bit of that going on, um, or some other ones, Wizard of Legend, Moonlighter, that kind of stuff. Got some of that built in. A little bit of randomization. So this hand's this hand's fine. It's not great. It's fine. We're gonna keep it. It's a little bit on the slow side, which I, I don't love. But it's got stuff to do. It's not it's not do nothing. We're getting Mulder and Arcanus down. We can get the one damage beat down on. Opponent is on green. There's a Kelden Raider. Kelden Raider is a good pickup here. We would like to find a mana in the next two turn. Land. So we can get that Kelden Raider on the board. It'd be real nice if it was an island so that we could kick our Blink of an Eyes too. We don't really want to use those before we could kick them. Sapperling Migration. So opponents on green black, assumedly. There's a Journey Mage. That's a nice pickup. We'll go to attacks, and we will beat in. No blocks. Journey Mage. Thing for two. The Journey Mage pickup makes this clock a lot faster than it was otherwise. There's some chance that the opponent might double block, or they might just have a uh, good response. Song of Freilis. That's alright. Especially if you've got another 3 drop to come down here. The Ball of Angel, it's a 2 drop. It's not a 3 drop, but it's something. We can look for value off a of Blink of an Eye by blinking Cabal of Angel and getting the free kill on the Sapperling here. Because chances are he's going to double block one of our creatures. Whether he decides to double block the Journey Mage or the Arcanist is almost entirely up to him. There's another one drop. Stronghold Confessor. Okay. So we'll just go to combat. And we're going to attack with everything. Actually... Let's just attack with Arcanus. I want to force him to block, double block this. Hmm. 
No go. Okay. Play down another Arcanus. Still looking for that next land so that we can get to Kelvin Raider. The Fire Fist add up's really nice and it's going to be good later, but we're not there yet. Feral Abomination. Well, that's going to have to get um, Blink of an Eye, I think. For Fiery Intervention. That's fine, too. It's probably better. In a whole lot of ways. And... We don't want to trade our Gitu Journey Mage. We've got the Fire Fist Adept in hand. It'll let us kill something with four toughness right now, so. So he does get to get in with everything here. He's swinging in for nine. Dropping to 11. That's kind of fine. It's not great, but we'll deal with it. I'd definitely like to get the uh, Kelvin Raider down this turn. That with Omnivore is really scary. There we go. There's the land. What is the cost on Omnivore? It's one, and it's plus two, plus two each time. So one, two, three, four. He can hit 11 on that next turn, which means we can't just play Kelvin Raider right now. We need to... Oh, well, we can, actually. We just have to chump block that. Which doesn't feel great, but... He has to sacrifice one of his tokens if we block with Journey Mage. We're essentially trading a 3-2 three, three, or a 3-2 for a 2-2, two, two, and we are getting some extra value. I will cycle Blink of an Eye. For free. There's an Arcane Flight. And no attackers. We're holding everything back to block with. Cast down. That's a good card. We're in a, a little bit of a sticky spot here. So we want to block like this, and then like this. Come on, game. Don't freeze up on me. Not in the middle of combat. If you freeze up on me in the middle of combat and we have to restart, we're going to lose. So we can assume that he's going to activate once. And he does. And we can Fire Fist to take down one of the three health guys. I'm assuming to take down Cabal Evangel. Um, we'd like to take down Omnivore, but he can pump Omnivore, so we can't actually do that. He might sack Cabal Evangel when we target it with Fire Fist add up to gain life, but that's fine. The idea is that we're going to just be running him out of options thanks to sack, and eventually he's not going to have a board left. Sadly, we are having to chump block while all of this is going on. Okay, he does not get the free life gain. Uh, punt for opponent. No attacks. We're going to have to block everything again. He's out of cards, which is nice. We've got blink of an eye. What we can do the following turn is we can go block two of his things that are small enough to just block normally with Arcanist, let his Thalid Omnivore th through, let him sack his stuff, and then blink of an eye if he goes for the kill. Okay, so he's just attacking with Omnivore. We have to block. We'll chomp.
gonna land. Now do I arcane flight and get in with fire fist adept? I don't think I do yet. I think we're gonna pass the turn. We're gonna go on the blink of an eye plan that we're talking about. We're gonna basically block these two and he's gonna sack both of them to try to kill us. And we're gonna blink his guy. Okay, yep. It's a big dude. That'll be something that we're gonna have to deal with. We don't have to deal with it this turn. Is he just attacking with that? He's not gonna declare the attacks with the other two. You should declare with all three. We'll get a blocks. Double block confessor. Two blockers. Sack sack, do it. Do it, 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 do it. Yep. There's one. Resolve. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. You've got lethal. Do it, do it, do it. Yes. <laughs> the blowout. Oof, island on top's not great though. Omnivore is going to come back down. I don't know if we're going to win this game anyways. Sadly, we're kind of like way, way behind. But there is a chance... And it absolutely involves me getting in with both of these. We need him to not have two creatures that he can cast and still have up two mana. Then we need the top deck fight with fire. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's pretty much the only way we win. Okay, Omnivore sure getting in for three. That's fine. No, I guess that's still not enough, even if we top deck fight with fire, because he's going to be able to drop Paralyte A-bomb and uh, block us up a little bit. We can kill his guy. So we'll say no attackers. We're going to have to block each of these. We're going to have to chomp the Arcanist and trade on the Omnivore. Which puts me dead to basically anything. With no action in hand. Vicious Offering. Okay, yeah. So you get the upside of both of those. And we don't have any cards left in our deck that are going to get us out of this situation. We'll see what the top card is. It is D2, a Journey Mage. It's not doing anything for us. All right, we'll go ahead and scoop this one up so we can get another game underway. That was our first loss, I think, right? Are we at four and one? Boop, boop, boop. Oh. Hopefully, uh, when we do get a little bit of money saved up, we can increase the production quality of all of our stuff because having a more powerful computer is going to let us do a lot more things. Um, it's going to let us 
have the ability to do like scene transitions and stuff and I'm gonna be able to run some editing software on it that isn't gonna take four hours to save a 30 minute video file. Which is gonna mean that we're gonna get to edit stuff instead of just exporting straight to YouTube from a from a clip basically of the stream. More storage space is gonna let me keep the video files locally as well. Looking forward to that. Looking forward to being able to increase quality of stuff if even if the frequency is gonna go down a little bit. It's all about goals. Finding ways to get there. So we're gonna mulligan. Can't keep a one lander. Not even with this uh, nice little aggressive deck. Two lands, blink of an eyes, no red mana. We'll keep and scry land to the top, hopefully. Come on, mountain to the top. Yeah, mountain to the top. We good. We'll probably just play the Journey Mage as a 3-2 this turn. Yep, that's the plan. Gotta get on the board and be the proactive player with a deck like this, which isn't isn't the type of playstyle that I necessarily prefer all the time. Every now and then it's fun to be the proactive player, but it feels so delicate compared to playing reactively. Tends to be my preferred play style. But we got handed a blue red wizard's draft, so. We're being the aggressor. Alright, Cabal Paladin's gonna hit the board and then we're gonna blank it. We're gonna draw. Kicker. Come on, action. That's not action. That's a land. Come on, action. It's also land. Get in with our journey, mage. Another three. More swamps. On the, on the try and resolve Cabal Paladin again plan. We are on the blink of an eye again plan. Come on, action. I'm just doing this with a 3 2 on, on the board feels pretty good, even without having a ton of action, because, well, there's our fight with fire. We've got him down to 14 already. There's a Radiant Lightning. We basically have him dead in hand as long as we find lands. Normally you should attack first. He's only got one land up. It's black mana. I'm not really afraid of anything playing out cold water snapper like that. So I was just doing that because it felt faster. Technically, the ordering could have been better. So we're going to go to combat, and we're going to swing with everything here. And if we can kill it before we get to fight with fire, that's great. Chances are we won't. There's a chance that he trades here. If he says no blocks, we'll, uh, we'll show Radiant Lightning and CV scoops like the other guy did. Alright, so he's showing blocks. We'll save Radiant Lightning until his turn. That was the that was the expected action out of him was to block like that. He wants to slow us down. We need one more land or a Voldaren Arcanist. We have eight lands so far, so we've got 
11 out of 26 to find a way to resolve fight with fire. Oh no. Oh, that sucks. All right, maybe he takes radiant lightning because he's bad. You never know. I'm not talking to you, Alexa. My, my uh, stepdad's uh, Amazon um, home thing thinks I'm talking to her. We don't need you right now. All right, cool. There's the scoop. Is Divest not hit? I thought Divest hit um, non-creature spells, which means that he should have been able to take my fight with fire, right? I guess if he doesn't have another play, if he has, if he doesn't have a creature to go with it, he dies to the burn on um, Radiant Lightning anyways. That might have been why. Might have been why the scoop. So this deck definitely has its uh, its weakness. The uh, five attack, five toughness creatures make a sort of wall that we can't get through. We're up to five wins again. Oh, we're up to six wins. Holy shit. We're going to go seven wins with this. I'm calling it. I've jinxed it. It's not happening now. At least we're going to have two really good uh, Dominaria draft videos in a row coming up before uh, before rotation happens. Or not rotation, but before the new uh, draft formats go up. Which I'll be happy to see new draft formats, because eventually I'm going to get tired of drafting Dominaria, right? I'm glad that they rotate the quick draft formats in the first place at all. My assumption is that they're going to have quick draft and... Um, Competitive draft both be M19 starting on Thursday for probably at least the week before quick draft rotates. So we'll have plenty of time to do some quick drafts of that and have a good time with that. All right, so we've got a uh, kind of a crap hand, but we have lands, we have burn spells, we've got a cold water snapper in the late game. We just don't have anything reactive to do. We don't have anything really proactive to do. This is probably something that I should mulligan. I kind of want to keep it, but I don't think that it's the right play to keep it. So we're going to mulligan. This is fine as long as we find a third land. And we get to scry. Land at the top. Yes, please. This is Talarian Scholar and a Journey Mage and a Kelvin Raider, which is perfectly fine. If anything, we're kind of happy with that. That's more power than we're usually getting at the beginning of our curve. i get the island down. There's a Fire Fist add up, too. Oof. All right, give me that fourth and fifth land, and we're just flying. Even if not, I mean, we can be flying without the uh, land immediately with our cane flight. Haha, -ha, I made a pun. Enjoy my pun. For they are few and far between. Donner Barely, 1990. This guy is born in the same year as us. And maybe he just times out and we go to seven wins by having our last opponent time out on us. Wouldn't that be funny? All right, there's, there's the mountain too. Nice. That's a scholar comes down first. Almost click journey mage. That would have been a that would have been a little bit of a punt. We can um arcane flight and journey mage on the same turn next turn if we want to, which will let us get in over the top of this guy. But I think Kelvin Raider's probably better. So we'll Kelvin Raider. Because I'm always right. Even when I'm not. We want to discard and draw. I don't think we do. I think we like our hand a lot. So. We're just going to use Kelvin Raider for his big old body. Oh, 
There's another journey mage. It's all journey mage. Now, do we want to make our Kelden Raider fly? Oh, I guess we can't because it tapped our mana wrong. Thanks, game. That's what I get for not paying closer attention. There's a steal away on Kelton Raider, assumedly. Good thing we didn't make Kelton Raider fly. That would have sucked. I think Talarian Scholar or Gitu Journey Mage are better targets anyways. Probably Gitu. Kelvin Raider is kind of fine on board as is, even as a ground creature, just because he's got enough health and he's got a whole big chunk of attack. Dark Bargain. Ooh, he's helping us kill him. Thank you. I can appreciate that. So, yeah, let's Arcane Flight first instead of screwing that up again. I was going to let us get in with everything again. Looking at doing six damage. For one mana off of Fire Fisted Up, doing a whole bunch of work. And it's not actually six, it's eight. We're putting him to four. Because we're dropping Journey Mage. Fungal. Okay. Yeah, minus one, minus one until end of turn. Fine. Are you going to double block the uh, Scholar? Because you clicked the wrong thing. Journey Mage coming down. I'm pretty sure he meant to hit our Scholar with that. So that he could trade it with his Knight. And now if we get land, we just win. It probably doesn't even matter if we get it immediately. It can probably be a little bit slow, and we still are probably going to win. Because as soon as we get it, we've got Fire Fist Adapts. We've got Fiery Intervention. Even without the land, we're getting a couple of damage in. We're forcing him to make bad blocks. Hopefully it's land, though. Here we go. Goodbye, Windgrace Acolyte. Hello, Seven Winds. <laughs> seven and one. Which means we get two packs to open. I do believe. And who doesn't love opening packs? Flame prize. Flame prize. Oh, yeah. Back up to a thousand gems. That was where we started today. Which means that we've just got, uh, what, 80 cards for free, basically? This is a heat. And we might be getting close. Uh, yeah, we got a vault as well. Slime Foot, Urza's Ruinous Blast. And, oh no, it's at 96%. We don't quite have it yet. We want to hit that before 